ask you firstly about Joe. I know I asked you after the game on Saturday about an appeal on his red card. Has there been any, has there been any discussion about that, or you, you just resigned to the fact that it, it, it was probably a red and he'll miss the yeah, three games? Yeah, probably. So we spoke uh, about uh, the action this morning, and Joe was uh, fair and quite clear about uh, the action. And uh, after the, um, the foul, he stayed uh, waiting for the decision, but it was clear for him. So it should be three games, yeah. Um, so that presents one problem for you in terms of replacing him, but you've been talking the last couple of weeks about how happy you are with the squad and should, as it happens, it was a red card for Joe, but we'd be talking about the, the three or four players on four yellows, that one or other of them is probably going to drop out. You're more than happy with the replacements you've got in, in that case of losing a player. Yes, we, we, we have a, a squad with, um, I think, 16, 17 players able to play in, in the core, and then we have uh, other young players they need um, foundations to explain them to express themselves, but uh, this core exists uh, at the minute. So, um, for me, it, I'm confident with uh, the options we have. Um, we'll have to create something new, but um, with the culture we have now, it's not a problem. And, and how is Joe been himself? Because it's the first time he's had to confront um, a, a game band like this, and he's played pretty much every game last season. Yeah. He's played every game this season. So, Mentally, it's probably quite an issue. Yes, it happens during a career, and uh, he's waiting for the decision now. Um, we can learn from many situations, and this is a new situation for him. And uh, when we analyzed this morning the, the sequence um, of actions before that uh, that foul, we can find some different elements. We can managed differently, so it's a new a new learning and I'm sure uh, it will be stronger after that. Um, it is a young squad, so this, as you say, these are going to be new experiences for a lot of players when they have to confront these sort of issues. And for you as well, I suppose, this season, is this point in time with Joe being out, um, potentially other players picking up cards, is this the first time this season you're facing uh, sort of a, another challenge, if, if you see what I mean? Yeah, I agree, I agree. Uh, we kept um, probably 11, 12 players together uh, to start the, the different games and now probably uh, we'll have a um, higher rotation in the squad. Um, but for me it's not a problem as well because a um, uh, long season, especially in championship like that, we have to manage probably 16, 17, 18 players for the core of the team. And uh, we are, I think we are ready at the minute to, to manage that situation. Obviously, um, we'll have to, to find new references because a new player in the squad with his own style, uh, with his own experience, it's, it's different and we'll have to, um, to adjust to manage probably the first, the second, the third game to find the right balance. But it's, the, it's, it's life, I think. And, uh, uh, we can't uh, think that um, we can play with 11 or 12 players the whole season. It's um, just normal. Yeah. You will be helped if you can have some players back. Um, can I ask about a few of them? Anthony Patterson, I assume, won't play at Preston. You, you look at the commentary. Probably it's um, we. The report is done every morning, and uh, it was better this morning. So probably for Preston it will be too short, but we'll see for for Saturday. And uh, for the others, yes, we are happy because uh, many players are back in the team. And um, it wasn't the case before we were on the edge. And um, for example, Ballard, for example, Eliza, for example, uh, Aji, not for Preston, but probably later. But he's training now with the team, so it's good news. And Riggy as well. So. Yeah, they are available. I was going to ask about Chris and, and, and Dan. Um, are both of them available for, for the Preston game? Yeah. Which is good for you from the sense that I've lost Joe. No, no, is Dan being back? Does it give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of what formation you might play against Preston? What formation? May you go three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Uh, um, I explained that, uh, that idea before. Um, we, we built uh, 
a system, strong foundations, and, and I don't want to change too early the, the structure because uh, I think we have now uh, good references and uh, we can change um, during some phases the shape, but it's just uh, because uh, we need to solve a problem. For example, we use the back five with uh, a midfielder and not with a um, uh, center back because it's needed during the game. But uh, I think we'll, we'll work on the, the back four. I don't know the, the scenario of the season, but at the minute it's better to play, to play like that because uh, we share the references and we have so much to do to improve, to, to go further. So um, at the minute, uh, I don't think it will change. Yeah. So effectively, it's going to be difficult for Dan to get back in the team at the minute. But I, I do wonder if that's, as you sort of hinted last week, might not be a bad thing with the international break coming up as well to, to make sure he's absolutely 100% when he does come back. Yeah, it feels good. And um, I think um, when he, he returned uh, the first time, he struggled because um, he, he wasn't. Um, uh, at one hundred percent from his um, uh, feelings about his uh, ankle, his uh, tight as well. So now it's really good. So it's it's different. And um, when you struggle with uh, pain, it's it's still difficult to to find the um, the right behavior on the pitch. So uh, now it is good, and you, we know that uh, we have many players with four red, uh, red uh, yellow cards. So we don't know when uh, it will happen. So for Trey, for example, uh, he managed uh, six games, I think, in a row without uh, receiving a yellow card. So maybe <laughs> we'd last uh, 10 more games. I don't know. So uh, if he's ready, it's good for us. And we'll have to manage unpredictable situations. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Trey. Are, are you um, pleased with the way that he's managed that, that situation? I mean, the next question, why couldn't he manage it? Beforehand, but he clearly he, he's been disciplined enough in some very difficult situations. Increased Park Rangers, one of them, yeah. not to pick up that. Yeah, I agree, I agree. So we can see that uh, when a player have to has to manage um, a new condition, and uh, he can change his behavior because it was very intense, probably too much, too uh, intense. Uh, I remember the situation at, at home, a uh, big tackle against I don't know, uh, very early in the game. Mm -hmm. It was uh, yellow, but uh, probably a red car, and he didn't play like that uh, uh, later. So um, he managed very well this situation, and uh, I think it's good for him because uh, when you have this condition, you have to think differently, and um, he's improving his behavior on the pitch. Yeah, I'm very uh, happy. Joe missing um, Adam Brown, the obvious replacement. He's too professional to come banging on your door and demand that press but I'm sure he'd love to go back to play mm. on Wednesday night. We'll play. <laughs> and he deserves to, to play, obviously, because he's a great uh, professional and um, with a good experience, good leadership, quiet leadership, but strong leadership is very interesting. So, obviously, the, our midfielders uh, played very well since the beginning of the season and um, for Brownie, he needed to wait, but uh, he knows uh, that uh, the, that league is so long that so it was sure that he'll have uh, opportunities to play. So it's now, and um, he did well. So um, I'm confident for him as well. And deep down, you know, strange to deep down. Um, so it'll be a very different person, I think, to the team that you, you saw earlier in the season with Paul Heckingbottom coming in now, um, and seemingly he's making. They're coming hard to beat, so we're going to get another sort of test again. Yeah. I guess it's the increased range of situation where they don't want to lose the games that makes it more competitive. Yes, that, that league is very competitive and um, every team uh, is proactive. So even if you are in the bottom of the table, the, the, the teams doesn't wait, don't wait for a mistake. They, they try to push, they try to, to use the man-for-man -man marking and to play direct play or not and um, it's not a passive op uh, opponent and I'm sure that uh, Preston won't be passive against us um, they can manage uh, the man-for-man -man marking for example they are strong uh, they are very intense so it uh, will be a good challenge for us again 
after Luton, after QPR. Um, we'll see if we learned from this experience. It wasn't a bad, bad game for us, but uh, we need to improve to reach uh, different uh, uh, new levels, especially for the goal kick restart, for example, or the build up under pressure. Uh, it would be interesting to see if we, we are improving. Yeah. No problem. How happy is half Chris Rick back in the selection of the season? So please, <laughs> really, because uh, obviously when uh, we think about um, a problem in the, in the chest, uh, we can think of many, many, many things about uh, the issue. But uh, uh, fortunately, it was, um, wasn't bad. And uh, he trained very well this morning, so I'm very pleased for sure. Pleased for him and pleased for the team because uh, he's very important for us. For the balance of the team, uh, it's very interesting. And that side with Patrick, with Trey, they are playing so well in that triangle. And uh, when you lose an element like that, it's, we need to recreate or rebuild something new. So you need time, and sometimes it's different with a different output, but um, it's important for us, and I'm happy. Uh, it will be in the team for Preston. Yeah. How is Jones and Milan Alexic on the bench against QPR? How far are they away from a contribute for some of them? Um, I don't know, really, because uh, they need uh, opportunities. And uh, probably we are in that uh, target. And um, uh, he's still young um, and he needs to learn um, the, um, the culture, the language. Um, Football is a common language, it's a shared language on the pitch, but um, when you come from a new country, another country and is very young, you need to time, you need time to adapt. So it's not too far and uh, I think it could be a good option for us. Yeah. So that as well, how far away is, is Aynazi approaching for fitness? Salis, I think we'll need to wait the uh, beginning of uh, December to be sure because it was a re-injury and muscle re-injury, so it's in, not an ankle or a knee, you know exactly the time you need to recover with a muscle injury and re-injury especially. We need time and we we'll need him for Boxing Day, January and so on, so uh, many, many games to play and um, I'm looking forward to see him on the, on the pitch because uh, it will be useful for sure. But we have to wait. Yeah. Definitely. Patrick Roberts has now joined um, Rick and Trey Hume on four yellows. Is that something you sort of consider when you when you selecting your team, or is it just sort of deal with that problem when when it comes to it? Yes. Uh, is it experienced? <laughs> he did very well, Patrick. I was very happy uh, against QPR because it was a tough game and he defended so well with the team. So um, for the the team mindset, a player like him. I'm sure that uh, he preferred to have the ball in, in, to his, his feet, but um, this game was very demanding from that part of the game and he did so well, so um, I'm very happy for him and um, he will manage the situation. But you know that uh, in football, sometimes you need to make a foul because it's important for the team and you make this foul and you, you will wait one game away. It's not a, we'll see. Yeah. Hi, uh, how impressed were you with the team? with 10 men against QPR and coping with that situation, particularly when it can be hard, I imagine, to get messages onto the pitch about how to change the structure yeah. or the way they play, and to, to see that happen. Uh, it started uh, from the Job's behaviour, because it was calm. So at that moment, um, you can create a panic, because you struggle with the decision that, oh, now uh, we, we won't be able to manage the situation. So it started from that point. And after Luke and Dan, I don't remember exactly, came um, close to the bench. What is the shape? I th we thought that it was the 4 for one to start. And they managed the situation so well with a 4 for one with confidence. Uh, we defended uh, in a low block, for sure. But um, mm -hmm. I think we conceded two, two chances, one shot, and um, the header on the second post. And uh, probably in that situation, we still have uh, an element to develop because we have the team and players to, um, to keep the ball. Um, instead of just defending, we can defend with the ball. But um, 
uh, it was a good job really because 10 against uh, 11 for 30 minutes away especially um, we felt the confidence and um, the strength of the group I think you said you're pleased with the, the depth of the squad of the number of players you have are they are the players also quite flexible in that they can play different roles is that they're able to slot into different positions on the pitch a lot um, it's a good question because um, at the minute um, my first concern is to keep the structure and the foundations we built together. For example, the goalkeeper, we changed Patterson, now it's Moro, it's good and we, don't, we won't pick up a player for that position. And I think for the back line, the same idea, for the midfielders, the same idea, for the strikers and wingers, the same idea. So they know where they are in the hierarchy. And it's clear, and when a player is, is, is injured and received a, a red card, I know that my opportunity can come, and uh, because the foundations are strong, uh, young players can. It's easier to play with uh, a back four, uh, experienced back four, and uh, I prefer to keep the the shape and the different position we have at the minute and uh, give an opportunity to a young player to play in a new position, in his main position. And uh, we'll see after, after this opportunity, if he don't play, doesn't play well, you know that you have to wait and to work and, uh, in a training session uh, until your next opportunity. And you could go into an international break, still top of the league, you'd hope to. What, what would it mean to be still top of the league when that comes around? Uh, Still a good start to the season, <laughs> I can say, because... Um, still a start. Yes, it's still a start. Uh, it will be 15 games. Okay, so 15 games, uh, it's uh, only one third. Less than, uh, less than one third. Um, winning is important, improving is important. And at the minute, uh, winning um, is not easy, really. So you, you serve, uh, for example, Burnley at... Um, at uh, Millwall, they lost one nil. This league is very tough. So when you can win and you have a good dynamic, uh, impose your game when it's possible. So it's it's it's, it's, it's important. And I think um, we are winning one, two, or three more players in the squad pro progressively. So it's good for the the length of uh, of the league. And when I hope we'll have the full team, it will be more powerful, more experienced. And um, the second part of the, of the league, we'll see. It's very far. Okay, <laughs> yeah. thank you. A few more points closer to 92, so that'll be good. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah.